start streaming. And we are live yet again. <laughs> yet again. <laughs> and again and again and again. Charles Koss, meet my friend Killendale. And again. Hey, how's it going? Okay. So, uh, so I, I guess, I mean, I was really kind of slam triggered off of uh, anthropomorphy. Uh, I was thinking, you know, electric universe. Um, I think it's all just made of consciousness, or what is electricity and magnetism is the force of consciousness, um, and. When we anthropomorphize, I think what we're doing is identifying that that element, that underlying ultimate truism, that my environment is also its own conscious thing that a lot of people call God, um, but it's a little bit deeper than that because uh, the, the word God has been, you know, it's been coined up. It's been meant to mean something that's... <sighs> has a personality, you know, and when you're the all of the universe, including all of the people in it, like, it's not really like a personality per se, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, like that much of a collective, like rocks and shit. But it's like, all we are is just a, basically like a, a figment in the imagination of God. And like we are ourselves components of God that he uses from himself to create the universe. And it's an illusion because it's just like a figment within the imagination. Um, it, like reality really doesn't exist, but the collective force of nothingness wanted existence. It wanted to like become self-aware and in that, that journey of self-awareness and nothingness, it created like ultra high frequency um, like forces. And those are, I think, what is like the force of consciousness. It's what's peering through our, our minds and our brains are, in my opinion, conductors of electricity. Um, I think people, and it's proven, you know, the hundred mon hundredth monkey that thought is, um, it's like a spectrum that we can all access. And um, sometimes we access the same thoughts as other people at the same time because that's what our minds are open to based on the values and the principles that we, we can think in terms of. So some people are going to be open to thoughts in the atmosphere like the Wright brothers trying to accomplish flight around the same time. How many other people did that? You know, like... That's a that's a known thing. Well, you said a lot there. Some of it I actually agree with. Some of it sounded very Deepak Chopra esque. Yes, I agree. What I don't even know who that is. You don't know who Deepak Chopra is? I, I'm not sure like what his what his message is all about at all, no. He's a new age pseudo scientific or pseudo intellectual who uses a lot of scientific buzzwords to put out his message of consciousness and unity and he tries to interject and intertwine a lot of scientific terminologies like quantum entanglement and the quantum realm and how it relates to consciousness as if he knows what he's talking about and he doesn't he doesn't and it's very pseudo-intellectual. It's word salad. It's dazzling. Because in the middle of his sentence, he'll say things similar to what you said. It's the, that, you know, he'll, he'll throw in, like what you said, you know, our brains are, are electromagnetic uh, machines. That they operate on electricity. And, and the hundred monkey theory, and which is a real thing, by the way. Um you know this proves this and this proves that and quantum pro theory proves so you you are you objecting the hundredth monkey no 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 theory? no I'm, I'm telling you that is a real thing that's actually been shown their experiments um tests and studies have shown that it's actually uh, a real thing that not just in monkeys but human beings as well right 
Right. And that's so when I said it that way, you made it seem as though I said it in a way that I would already be supposed to be false just because I said it's a real thing, by the way. But then you yourself just responded to that when I asked if you would object to the hundredth monkey syndrome. Well, the hundred monkey concept, again, it is a real thing. I recognize it as a real thing. It's a real observation. And, uh, and all I said is, I believe the brain is a conductor of electricity. Well, there was something you said earlier. I was trying my best to hold it in my mind and pay attention to you while not forgetting it and not interrupting you because I didn't want to be rude. But I wanted to hold this thing in my mind, something that you said. And I, now it's gone because it's too far removed. But you said something about the nothingness, the universal nothingness. Oh, yes. Wanted I... It wanted to experience itself I'm how would I know that right how would I know that right um, so like in the spans of creation I mean it, I wouldn't know it right I, I'm only speculating of course I don't know anything uh, same with anybody else talking on these subjects but this is where I've come to um, and the very first creation in all of creation is the individuation or the self-realization of the concept that is nothingness, right? But, like there was nothingness before nothingness that didn't even realize it wasn't nothing. But then there was nothingness that realized the, the number zero is what I'm talking about. It's an archetypal concept. And zero is a vacuum for every potential. Uh, and so it, but it, it has no energy to it, right? It's, where is it, where does it create anything? And it, and it's only creation is in its own hyperbolic self-analysis, its own creation of mind. Stop right there. Stop right there. Right. You, you said it. Yeah. It is a definition of a thing. Yeah. And you're talking about a thing that is has no energy that is basically zero it is nothing how can you have nothing and call it an it because it's um it's a meridian within a realm of relativity now you sound like deepak chopra what the fuck does that mean <laughs> so it's it's relative unto itself um like when you Look at a, a, a compass, it has 360 degrees, okay. but there, there's also zero. Zero is one of them. It actually has 359, and the 360th degree is zero. Um, and it's... It's the alpha and the omega, the starting and the ending point. Right, like, you can always reference back to the idea of nothingness. So it's its, it's, its own... And in, in electric universe theory is what it's talking about is the like the the battle between electricity and magnetism the the force of polarities and and, and reality de uh, shows us this in every dimension happiness and sadness that we our whole life is a series of polarities and that's how we perceive it my um, my my question at this point is you bring up electric electricity and magnetism <clears throat> but there is a third factor that it comes in, and that's gravity. They are all interrelated. Well, so well gravity now, is just a form of magnetism, in my opinion. Gravity well, is, in fact, it, Amy, I'm not sure if you've seen Walt Thornhill's presentation on gravity. And you really should if you're not familiar. Well, I, I'll hunt for it then. I'll, I'll find it, and then I'll give it to you. Because oh, excellent. Excellent. Because the way Wall Thornhill describes gravity in terms of electromagnetism is so fundamental and easy to understand. He explains it in a way that makes so much sense. Awesome. That it's looking it's, forward. It, I mean, I'm no PhD physicist, but it's certainly for me pretty hard to refute or. Or, or it's it's so easy to understand. How I mean, it's just like boom in your face. It's like oh, I get it now. Do you know what I mean? It's like wow, there it is. He explains okay. gravity. Yep. And it, think of 
I'll, I'll try to get. I'll try to put it into words, and I'll try. Density to... is a huge part too, though. Like, it, does he talk about no. density too? Yes, 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 he does. Uh, mass, not density, but in, in terms of mass, and it's it's also a it's an effect of electro uh, electricity. So, think of it this way: think of an electron. I mean, your symbol. Your, your icon, Killendale, is a, is a perfect circle. You've got the, the yin and the yang. But ignore the graphics inside. Think of a perfect circle. Now, think of an, uh, the nucleus of an atom in the center of that circle. Just look at your icon and imagine a nucleus right in the center. Now, I'm going to highlight you at least so that I can, I, don't, I hope everybody else can see your, your icon without interruption. Now, now imagine that nucleus moving from the center, right? The outside where you have the white band is the electron shell. Now imagine the nucleus, not in the center, but imagine that black dot in the middle of the white yin. Imagine the nucleus relocating itself off-center, where the black dot is. You follow me? Yeah. Okay. That's gravity. Can you explain that a little bit more? Probably no, because I'm not Walt Thornhill. <laughs> but the way he describes it is that when... God, I, I'm, I'm probably going to mess this up terribly. That when things attract themselves to each other through electromagnetism, that the nucleus of an atom will shift its position from center to off-center, closer to one side of the, the, the electron shell. And that is an indication of mass and gravity. That's your vector. That's the direction of gravity. It's, it's okay. A, it's a byproduct. Okay, so it's a byproduct of electricity, saying, no matter what, every time. And that is a product of like the rotation of the Earth, or the direction that the earth is moving in in a grander scale of the solar system well, is it relative to like you standing on the earth so is it like constantly to the side of us right now you know is it like on the the side of us that's back relative to the rotation of the planet like it, we're being pulled on this rotation in a way think of think of every atom in your body as it's being pulled towards the center of the earth Every atom in your body is has the nucleus is offset. It's not in the center of its little electron shell. It's slightly it's, offset. It's, towards, it's pulled towards the center of the earth. Right. It's a it's a it's a product or byproduct of electromagnetism. All right, so try this on for size. What if the center of the earth would then be like the true center of ourselves? We would just be a center like a an extension of that and like our eyes is like looking out the bottom most part of ourselves I, I don't know what that means you know how like a, a computer motherboard has all the switch components on the back of it switch components on the back of it no like what are you like about? for you to put in USB ports Ethernet cables all the all the all the cables going to the motherboard Okay. But it's outside the back of a computer, right? Okay. Um, so, you know those charts with, like, the feet, and it says how, like, the feet, when you massage this part of the, the foot, it affects this part of the body? Yes. Like acupuncture-type charts? Yes. Uh, okay. So, no like, points. Is it, I'm, what I'm trying to get at is, like, we're we're an extension of the Earth, right? <laughs> like our feet connect 
to the ground and it has all like these root points that correspond to like every part of the body like the base of a plant's stem develops the flower sure i mean i've I've heard stuff like that and i think there's probably something to it i mean Um, i mean i've done electric i've I've done electrical like work i I used to i was i was at a print so i understand the concept of electricity and when you ground a circuit it literally is literally going to the ground the actual ground yeah the earth is absorbing the negative energy or or the return and the re- the, the flow of, of electrons as they return back to the earth right but we're talking about a much higher frequency grade something that actually structures our reality right now we're talking such high levels of frequency that are involved in the structure of our bodies and um, just the like the things that support our thoughts. Uh, we talked about the hundredth monkey syndrome, talking about that the thing that supports our thoughts is more like a field, like an electromagnetic field. Um, and yeah, stop what, calling what, it a syndrome. What do you mean? The hundredth monkey. I, I'm pretty sure it's not classified as a syndrome. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah, it's a bad word. So, <laughs> um, but. I'm ultimately trying to get at that. It seems like very obvious to me that we're this extension of the planet, which is used for its its own greater purposes, whether we have our own conscious will and part in that or not. I think it, and that's, you know, talking about things like the wheel of karma, energetics, uh, just... There's so many coincidences, and almost all of them center around people. Um, it, we're just such a powerful force. And the, the realms that we deal in um, are so unique. I think that creation itself exists just to entertain life at the level that hominids throughout the universe entertain life with pleasures and pains and loves and heartbreaks. Um, and that's – it. Th- that – that wheel itself, in and of itself, is the juice that makes it go at the end of everything. When things return to nothing for long enough, I think nothingness musters up the energy to do it all over again in an infinite variety of, you know, redefinitions of reality that may already be played out all at one time. Time may be irrelevant in that equation. And I think we're learning that, and we may be... Uh, able to to pretty much have a heaven on earth like experience through the development of really deep understandings of the nature and inner workings of reality what do you think uh, of all this charles in in the realms of consciousness and the human interaction and our our personal human experience and the the, the experience of humans on earth and, and particularly as consciousness is involved what do you what do you Oh, Colin Dell, you're bloody genius. This is amazing stuff. Uh, I, I started uh, 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 reading about Deepak Chopra also in another window while listening to this. And, and yeah, it sounds like Deepak Chopra, yes. <laughs> because I was reading he actually integrates quantum mechanics with his own teachings, um, with his own Ayurvedic uh, alternate medicine and living forever stuff. It's all state of mind kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not altogether following it, but yeah, it's 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 uh, it's 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 pretty pretty clever stuff, Killendell. Um, I mean, uh, yeah. any any uh, like logical attacks, please uh, go ahead. Uh, it, it's very philosophical. Uh, it's very it it, it makes sense uh, from a from a, if you're a if you're from a philosophical standpoint because it feels like it makes sense. Uh, I'm very scientific. Uh, although, although Rufus says I prove stuff without proving it, you know, there's speculation, which is good too. But <laughs> the stuff, the stuff you say is bloody is bloody good, and it doesn't make sense at a very fundamental level. It's it's interesting, yeah. Well, I like I like so, Charles because he's not afraid to speculate. He'll, he's not afraid to think outside of the mainstream box, and so. Uh, I, I got I didn't mad mean, respect I didn't, for that I didn't, response. That I didn't mean that response. to be a dig on you, Charles. I, oh, I, I, I meant it as a compliment. That is, I, I took it as a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I it any other way, yeah. I'm a little worried he's not um, 
he's not mentioning something particular. I'd love to like chew the fat on something particularly because I know that I'm not perfect. I'm, you know, prone to logical errors and over philosophizing is just my nature. Like it's what I do. And I am very scientific. I'm not, you know, deep ND with this. I'm not going to try and jump off a roof and commit myself to the hope that I might be able to in that moment fly like a bird. Uh, but I, I mean, it, it, I take it to the to the level of even like bioelectric issues. Like I think the reason why the Bible says not to get tattoos and piercings is because it will prevent us from aligning with higher electric magnetic, sorry, higher electromagnetic energies to create something like a, an inertia bubble by creating a counter-rotational force of the electromagnetic field of the auric body that everyone has. And it's totally conceivable. It's totally thought possible by me. Um, but I think we would have to be on a live enzyme diet to do it. I think we eat food that dampens our electromagnetic um, resonance. But if you look into Karelian photography, they talk about this and it's, it seems to make a lot of sense to me. I, I was just wondering what you would think of the spiritual experience that I had. And this was quite a number of years ago. And I do not remember what I was doing, but I do know that it was something mundane, like maybe washing dishes or folding laundry or something on that order. <clears throat> and uh, suddenly I both expanded and contracted and I expanded to the point where I was everything and I do mean everything all time all space all dimensions and contracted to the point where I was nothing no time no space no dimensions and I don't know how long I was in that state and I can't say when I returned because I never left but when things were back down to where I normally operate um, I couldn't bring back details like since I was you and I was everybody and everything and all planets and all suns and all, I mean, like everything, you know, at that moment, I could have told you what you were thinking, but there was just so much that, you know, what any given one was thinking or doing or being wasn't what I was focused on or not that I was really focused but when I got back none of that remained but I did have a very keen awareness that has never left me that consciousness is God consciousness creates the now now is the only thing that's real and we, as conscious and, oh, I should say all things are consciousness at some level of awareness. And we, therefore, as conscious and aware beings, are co-gods, co-creating the now. And it is from this that I have taken the idea that if enough of us decide to create better on our planet, we can do so. We are not powerless, which I get a lot of people telling me, oh, there's nothing we can do. We're stuck. You know, it's like, yeah, if you take that attitude, I suppose you're right. <laughs> but that isn't where I'm going. So I'm, I'm just curious what you make of that. Me? me? What yeah. I make of that? Yeah. Um, well, I personally identify with the expansion to the whole galaxy component. Oh, it was Not, more than the galaxy, hun. It was yeah, the no, I'm, I, yeah, the universe. I know what you mean. Um, I don't know if I 
became the universe itself like that much, but it felt like I expanded many, many star systems. But I didn't get to the zero point either as well. But I remember when I had my experience, I was younger. But everything else you said, I, I pretty well, um, you could say, resonated with, corresponded with. Okay. I, I like the words. I like the the feelings they invoke. I agree with them. I feel like I, I personally invest in that kind of idealisms, or idealism, excuse me. Um, All right. I, I, I don't know what, what kind of perspective on it were you hoping I might put? I, I just wanted whatever you said. So whatever you said was awesome and fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, you know, the reason I asked about that is because when you said that there was this something that wanted to be and all of that, I mean, I, that's not really quite what I got from my experience, that we are indeed separate nodes of consciousness. Yes, we are all connected, but we also are able to have free will. Now, I know Rufus will dispute free will. But I, what I see is the free will to choose. And we can choose our behaviors. And if enough of us choose our behaviors well, we can create better here. Well, I, to, be honest so with you, to be honest with you, Amy, I might actually be starting to lean more towards compatibilism. What is that? <laughs> Define that for me, please. Compatibilism is, if I'm not mistaken, it's the brainchild of Daniel, the philosopher Daniel Dennett, uh, contemporary, modern, he's alive right now. Um, mm -hmm. Daniel Dennett is, is effing fucking brilliant. Uh, he described, when, when he talks about free will, the concept of free will, he describes in his terms what he calls compatibilism. And this is where he accepts and acknowledges that the vast majority of all of our choices, our thoughts, our patterns, our desires, our emotions, our reactions are all governed by external forces, except that there is still some elusive underlying element where free will might still exist. There's something about our existence that still might allow for some element of free will. Well, I'm, I'm certainly not going to dispute that a great deal of what we are and what we choose has to do with conditioning and uh, education, or shall I say lack thereof in many cases. Like, for instance, the sentence you just said right now, Mm -hmm. was based on what I said. Yes. So was that free will? But well, I would like yeah. to, I have an argument here when you guys are through with your thing. I, I just want to say, yes, that was free will because I could have chosen not to say anything, but what you said inspired me. That's right. Okay. And it inspired me enough that I said, okay, I'm going to respond. And the way Sam Harris describes not having free will he describes that you know you didn't choose your parents your lineage your bloodline you didn't choose your dna makeup you you oh. don't you don't choose this the synapsis patterns in your brain function you don't choose any of those things thoughts appear in your mind outside of your control that you have no control over whatsoever so where is where does free will fall in there? I, 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 I'm going to I'm going to suggest that no, we don't have control over a great deal. However, we can consciously make choices on how we're going to behave. Oh. And that is where the free will comes in. All right. Well, without trying to shift the conversation too much to, you know, spend the two hours on free will, I just wanted to throw that in there that I'm. I'm, I may be shifting away from determinism and 
shifting more towards compatibilism. Okay. Which is the idea of that there is there's literally both elements at play simultaneously. Yeah, there there's definitely stuff we have no no control individually no control over. I agree. But there's a persistent element. But we do have control over how we choose to behave. What do you so like Rufus, are you saying like even like down to the word choice? that you're not operating with a like a sense of free will right i would uh i would i would seriously argue against that yeah. I would seriously argue. me like, too <laughs> uh, like the the word selection that i have at my disposal um i have a, a tremendous amount well, of words well let's can... let's do a quick thought experiment real quick um, <clears throat> conjure in your mind the name of a city. Don't say it out loud. Just conjure in your mind the name of any city in the world. Okay. Is it Paris? No. All right. That was uh, I was just guessing. Um, it wasn't for me either. Um, well, that's a pretty common one. But the, the, the point is, out of all the cities that you could have chosen, whichever one you did choose is irrelevant. How many cities are there in the world that you never knew the name of? Right? Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Right? That you know, you don't even know the names of these cities. So if you can't if you don't know the names of those cities, that it's not in your capacity to choose. Well, yeah, but that's a, that's not wait a minute. Lack of, lack of data does not mean no free will. Within the data set that you have to work with, I say you have free will to choose. All right, fair enough. I, and uh, admittedly, I probably represented Sam Harris poorly just now. <laughs> <clears throat> that, that's okay. But if, I mean, if I ask a few questions, I'm sure you can maybe present it more. Um, so. I think, like, when it comes to free will versus determinism, it also boils back to my ultimate, like, spiritual belief of um, whatever this nothingness is, experiencing somethingness over the expanse of infinite time in an infinite variety of ways, which in one sense could be said to be done all at the same time, right? So, like, every moment in time that you're going through, you're actually going through a process of probabilities of the way that light bounces off of things. And that's, that's a huge force. That's like being in a rowboat in the ocean, right? So like the sun, the winters, like, like this, the, the cosmic forces beyond your control, right? Like those are forces, but within that you have, this very obvious seeming ability to navigate that of your own accord. Now, the argument could say that even the thoughts that you have are just a product of mathematical uh, relationships in terms of values of those thoughts and how they've been instilled within you through like some kind of Pavlovian <laughs> understanding of how like psychology works. Um, and I just can't. Like, is, is that where you get behind it, Aaron? Or, or sorry, Rufus, excuse me. Um, or is that, am I, am I lost? Can anyone hear me? I can hear you. I, could you, I can hear okay. you. Could you just refine your question a little bit better? Yeah, so do you get behind determinism in the sense that it says that even your thoughts are the product of like mathematical relationships in terms of the values of ideas that you think in your so like your, your thoughts are it, it would seem that your thoughts are the product of pre-existing conditions that you have no control over and all of those conditions all culminate into a particular thought for which you have no control over like in a, in a conversation like this or any conversation 
or even if you're sitting in an audience watching a movie or listening to a lecture, thoughts will wander into your mind outside of your own will or desire or intention. I mean, thoughts just pop into your head all the time. All kinds of stuff and stuff that you, you wouldn't you would never think of stuff that you wouldn't act on the stuff that you wouldn't want to have your name attached to crazy stuff we all have things that just pop into our minds at random points at any given moment for which you have no control over whatsoever you didn't I, build and you, you didn't build your brain you have no control over how much oxygen is being supplied to your brain. Well, you might have some control. You can breathe more, smoke less, whatever. But the the fact is, you could wind the clock backwards. The, the, the clock of causality. You could wind that causality clock backwards to a point for which you had zero control over. And as that causality clock winds forward to who you are now, is again a product of for, for which you have zero control over. I feel like that's a defeatist perspective. I feel like that's... Um, Me too. And the reason, why, I've, the reason why I cannot see it that way is because... Um, I I will not resign something to circumstances. Um, I and because of that, I have achieved more than I would have been able to if I always just looked at it as a, a product of um, circumstance that I cannot overcome myself. And I I really believe at the core of my being the reason why that that is is because reality in itself is defiance to non-existence and it, it's it's this confoundry in and of itself that it, it, it does exist um, and to me that is a defiance to the to the resignation of circumstances from like the most powerful degree to create everything we have now out of nothingness. Ho however, it was done took a tremendous amount of effort and will and pain and like bloodshed and tears and suffering. And it's, it's all for the sense of contrast and it's all necessary and it's all done despite those pains and some parts of reality even get off on it you know feed into it all right I'll, I'll give i'll give you one more example then i want to get charles's take on this um sam harris puts uh, give he gives another example he is a, a, a neuroscientist and he describes a case and there are multiple like this there's a guy with a brain tumor and he doesn't know that he has a brain tumor. There's a guy who has a propensity towards violence and he gets himself in trouble. He gets arrested. He winds up in prison. And while he's in prison, he starts experiencing terrible headaches and eventually they give him a CAT scan. They find out he's got a tumor and it turns out he's got this tumor that's pushing on part of his brain that has that, that governs the control over impulse and they do surgery, they remove the tumor, the pressure is gone, and now his impulse control is back to normal, and he no longer has violent tendencies. Where was his free will? Sorry, um, his free will? Yeah. That's the, um, that, that's the $64 I'm not million saying, dollar question. Nobody's saying free will is an all the time everything kind of thing. Um, free will is, it's a leverage of consciousness over materia, reality. 
That's a and, you know what I like the way you phrase that. That's a that's good. I, I dig that. I I can I just add one last quick thing. Um, I used to suffer from chronic depression. And okay, you could say it was not within my control that I was introduced to the book Choice Theory by William Glasser, but I was introduced to it. And it took, you know, I, I could have just tossed it off, but I made the choice to at least give it a try. Whereby, uh, rather than deciding that there was nothing I could do, I decided there, that if I put this to use, I just might have some options. And I, they suggested something and Every time I started feeling depressed, I would say to myself, why are you choosing to depress? And sometimes I'd get an answer and most often I didn't, but it didn't matter because then I would follow it up with, is there a better choice? And initially my depression would go away for an hour or two and then we go through we, huh, I would go through that with myself again. But this is a very conscious decision that I made to do this. I didn't have to do it, and I could have chosen not to. But I had the free will to choose. And I would choose to ask myself, why are you choosing to depress? Is there a better choice? And after about uh, a month... I was getting depressed about once a week. And after about three months, I wasn't, I was rarely getting depressed, you know, maybe once a month or two, uh, it, it started to spread out. And at this point, I haven't had to ask myself that question for a very long time. <laughs> I do not choose to depress. Um, that's a good point you bring up, Amy, and as a woman, you bring to mind another aspect that I want to throw out there, and that is the monthly cycle of women, and men as well, by the way. We have monthly cycles where various hormones are higher and lower levels. Uh -huh. Women, women, obviously, on the more extreme end. Um so when you have particular hormones, chemicals flooding your body that are causing actions and reactions in your brain synapses, again, I ask, where is your free will? Well, you're, you're probably asking the wrong person because I have had men more than once be amazed that I never displayed any such behavior changes. <laughs> Well, never, would, nevertheless, you recognize that that is a problem. And when you well, talk and about. Well, I agree that, again, there are things that are outside of our control. Okay. However, when it hits, uh, one could make the conscious choice to watch one's behavior and not relinquish one's conscious free will to the effects that one is experiencing and that i think has a lot to do with my my choice of depression too Tra charles what say you what do you think of this? what say you child what, what, what this uh, this uh notion of free will versus determinism since that's what we're talking about what do you think i think it's a mix like you said sometimes ideas pop into our head and then you see things like, for example, um, my bro, he's a, he's a lecturer in physics. And he was talking about no, computer science. And he was talking about FAT32, you know, the old system, right, of hard drives. And well, when he said that, he said a fat person walked in. And the fat person thought he was talking about him. So we're driven by synchronicity. But we're also, uh, we, we do have a, a, some kind of freedom with our thoughts and to control our thoughts. But we can't choose not to have someone stop annoying us and then not react to that you know what i mean like it, we because we, 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 we can't control other people and so the universe is sort of controlling other people and their interaction with us 
and 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 they have and those and that has the power to make us angry or sad depending on whatever. I'm going to dis disagree with you. Yep. <laughs> you, you disagree I, 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 that you can't control other people? I disagree that you can't that that they make you do something. You no, no, do hang on, that. hang on, let, hang on, let him finish. It's because Amy, the reason we're asking the question, the reason we, no one has ever come up with this, the answer to the question, do we have free will or not, I think is because we have both. We have, it's both determinism and it's both free will. So, the, and, and the fact that words exist for both of them shows, shows that both exist. What do you think, Amy? Well, I'm, I'm going to say that that makes some sense. I have a saying, and it applies beautifully to this, and it's whether we have... Whether we're fated or have free will, I rem I never remember being given a choice between the two. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm just going to say that, that, you know, there have been times when somebody has said something to me and I have felt that rush of emotion that I might get angry or whatever. And I have said to myself, you have a choice here. You can let this get to you or you can let go of it and let it pass. <laughs> and I usually, I will not say always, sometimes I fail to get to that point. But usually I manage to go, okay, I will let go of this and let it pass. This all brings to mind a quote and i think it's forgive me if i get the author of the quote wrong i think it's albert einstein who said and 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 by the way i, I think this applies beautifully to the free will argument reality is an illusion so oh, just interchange reality with free will reality is an illusion albeit a persistent one Yeah. yeah, I do believe that that was Einstein. Um, one, yeah, I ponder, that. one ponder, I, I must ponder that, uh, you know, insofar as I certainly believe that what we see on the news is an illusion. But Ooh. then Ooh. I think that that's been deliberately created. Yeah, that's surface level. That's surface I've, level reality. I've got a response. I've got a response to Einstein's quote. And it goes like this: um, If an illusion is as good as reality, is it really even an illusion? So now good, you oh, good, so, good, good. I love it. So now you, oh, you now you just took us into the realm of solipsism. <laughs> uh, how how did that trigger you in that way? Because. There's an argument for so actually it's an argument against solipsism. Okay, so for those who, if you don't know, if you don't, for those who listening who might not know, solipsism is the idea of the matrix, a brain in a vat. Okay, that none of this is real; that we're the product of some computer program somewhere, or we're the product of some godly mind. Whatever we're experiencing is not actually real. That concept. Right, that nothing yeah. is nothing right. is real. That's solid. Yeah. I like how you expanded on that. I was gonna try and add to that, but you did it perfect. Okay, so that's solipsism. So there's an argument against solipsism, and it fits perfectly with what you said, Killendell, and that is, regardless of whether or not solipsism is true, regardless of the fact that I might be a brain in a vat. And this whole experience of life might be in a complete illusion. Even when I bump my elbow, when I feel pain, when I do so, might be an illusion. It might be computer inputs, electrical inputs to a brain sitting in a, a jar somewhere. That is irrelevant to the fact that I still have to deal with the pain when I bump my elbow. It's, yeah. it's still irrelevant even if solipsism is true, even if I am a brain in a vat, I still have to deal with the realities of the nature that I'm given. Yep. Yes, and that's why I'm a, I used to like really be solipsistic without even knowing about it in a way. But it is ultimately a depressing psychology perspective. 
um, because it's you. No, nothing is real but you is so invalidating to the experience of reality I know, and to right? the experience of the individuals yeah. of your reality. And um, it's invalidating to love. Yes. And uh, you know, it, it creates the worst kind of sociopathy, in my opinion. People who yes, invest in know, stall system. Um, if, but, not, if you believe nothing exists but you, why, why care? So why? does determinism, by the way. Yeah. It's basically determinism. It is. It's just saying I'm a product of my reality. My reality is supporting exactly who I am and it's making me who I am. And it's, and it's just started like, and it starts winding it up into like this overly um, godlike, um, what's the word? Um, complex. God complex. <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, people who have Messiah complexes are also very solipsistic. Um, and yes. it's, but it, it just, it ultimately, when you really think about it, it just can't be the case. Oh, uh, you know, kinda... that's, that's amazing. You said that because you sparked a thought that I remember from scripture. I am that I am. And that's exactly right. A Messiah complex does that. It, it gives yeah. you a solipsistic base for existence. I am that I am. In other well... words. I interpret that a little differently. Rather, rather than, who was it, Descartes, who said, I think, therefore I am, or was that Aristotle? But, I think that was but Descartes. But that's not, that's not entirely wrong. I mean, Alan Watt, you triggered an Alan Watt's memory in me, Rufus. He says, I am that I am, which is the name of God. And I mean, like, if God is everything, then you are definitely God, you know? If, if consciousness <laughs> is God and, and we are therefore well, the Bible clearly says God is everything oh, and from himself oh, made oh, everything. Co-gods co co-creating the now. Yes. Yeah. We are the um, co-creator. And, and that was like the real message of Jesus that I think that was so radical was him telling people like, hey, you are like, yes, I am the son of God, but you are my brothers and sisters. You know, like Actually, we are all children of God, not to, to, to like idolize him like that. To my awareness, he never said he was the son of God. He said he was what? the son of man. The, well, the, I don't know, like, what to believe in or rely upon in that whole thing. But no, Amy, the, no, he did, he did identify himself as the son of God. He said, you cannot get to the father but through me. Well, yeah, I understand that that is interpreted to mean that, and I can see how that could be interpreted as that but he never said specifically i am the son of god no he never said, he said i am the Grin son of man what's charles grinning about over there he's got a thought come on charles pipe up <laughs> now, but, uh, yeah, yeah the conversation's beautiful thank you for combo uh yeah as for jesus being the son of god or son of man i can't quite remember what the bible says and uh and didn't didn't this didn't this questions like this open the way for all these schisms and heresies and things like that? You know, because the Bible isn't exactly explicit because no one really knows. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, do you really want to rely upon the Bible, which was concocted by channelers? No, <laughs> uh, no, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Well, I wouldn't classify them as channelers. How do you know? You don't know that they were channelers. They could have just been <laughs> Jewish. <laughs> Go ahead, Charles. It, it, it's part by all, it, the, the New Testament. It, it's like it's it's not quite. You know, I've actually got a theory that the, the a few early books of the Quran are the actual New Testament of the early Christians, and uh, because they're the ones that talk about doing good, doing good, and that's a very Christian thing. You don't see that in the New Testament, but um, uh, the 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 New Testament books are definitely biographies made for mass consumption. Um, as for Book of Revelation, I guess that is channeled or, or something, or he was on drugs or something. But <laughs> oh, the new uh, the, uh, the Book of Revelation is nothing but an acid trip on, in text form. Well, it is. <laughs> maybe it was psilocy Maybe uh, it was psilocybin. It is. Yeah. Anyway, I'm heading. Well, uh, uh, thanks so much, Charles. It's it's always a pleasure. Uh, we love having you around, and thank you for your time. Absolutely. It's been wonderful. Have a good night, man.
Yeah. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Nice to meet you as well. All right. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Very good, Bye. Charles. Thanks. Have have yourself a good rest of your day. You too. I feel like I, I was probably a, a little too crazy for Charles' taste. Oh, I no, don't uh, think so. No, 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 not, no. You obviously don't know Charles. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, look, it's twelve o'clock. He's been with us since seven, five hours of his time. So. Yeah, he's actually, got things to do. Actually, it was six thirty. So we were chatting thirty minutes before we went live. So five and a half hours. That's. I, I can't yeah. ask for more than that. No, I, I. He just needed to get running. He's got uh, things, gotcha. things in, you know, he's in Australia. And so he got on about uh, 930 his time and it's Saturday. And yeah. I'm yeah. sure he wanted to move on yeah. and get his universe yeah. together. The window behind him was bright and sunny and now it's dark. And so obviously, you know, it's... Right, like talk about like all the alchemy in that. Was that free will or determinism? Was something within him binding him to this podcast, or was he like really <laughs> intent on listening? You know, really wanted to hang on there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, man. Like, I'm sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> no, I mean that's a good question, and I guess the only person to answer that would be him. So we can speculate all day long. That's true. I think I'll pass yeah. on the speculation, however. <laughs> it yeah. is what it is. You must be pretty winded, too, you guys. I don't want to tie you up too long. I mean, well, that was, I was a beautiful just, discussion. I yeah, loved I was, it. I was just thinking that I might want to also, it, you know, it's getting, it's actually 44 minutes past my bedtime. Yeah, it's almost, so. tw almost 12 my time. Yeah, well, that's almost yeah. well my time, and I like to go to bed around 11. This is probably so. a perfect place to call. I usually don't have much yeah. steam in me anyway. Yeah, I really enjoyed the discussion with you, Kalendal. I think that you and I see things very close <laughs> to the same way. Maybe some differences, but the small ones. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that we had a pretty similar experience. Not exactly yep. the same, definitely not. But that was, it was interesting when you went into that. You're going, gee, that sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. When you have an right. experience like that, I think that it, it really shifts your perspective. <laughs> anyway, you have a good night and love always. Yeah, it was good catching up with you, Kendall, and um, we'll see you around. I'm always in touch. You know how to get a hold of me. Most definitely. Yeah. You know what I wonder about, Amy, really quick? Mm. Is, yes. That's like a prefrontally loaded concept, maybe from like a movie or something we once saw. So I, I, I wonder about that. But What? My my experience? Not yours particularly, but mine. When I had that oh, experience. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Because I saw it... a movie or something. Mine was like totally nothing like I had ever even conceived of before. And I was like, wow, okay, that was something I could never have expected in any way, shape, or form. But it hmm. definitely made my grasp of how, how my work was to proceed. And that is to get enough people... Withdrawing consent and consenting to better. I, I do like a lot of your your ideas on things, actually. We have very similar perspective I, I, on many different things. But awesome. I, I got to go. I'm going to let yeah. you guys go. Okay. Um, wonderful talking to you. Have a good night. Yeah, I hope to talk to you again. Catch you next time around, Maddie. Be good. All right. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Right on. So um, I guess I'll engage the chat for a minute, Amy. Um, almost, it's, yeah. it's already past your bedtime. Yeah. Um, what happened with Gandalf? He had to run off? Yeah, I guess he had something he had to do. He didn't really say anything, but the way he tried to shut it down at 10. <laughs> and I, I, and I, then, and I saw a little message pop up from him that he, he mentioned he had to get out. Um, 
Yeah. What okay. Else? Yeah, I missed it, I guess. I haven't been focused much on the chat tonight. I was initially, but then things got hot and heavy and I totally totally forgot to look, so Well, um we got like twenty five, twenty six people chilling out with us right now and we were up to forty at our peak when we were hot and yes. running running around with Charles. So um, decent audience tonight and thanks everybody for, for checking us out and hanging out and most of you are, are regulars, anybody with a wrench, um, obviously regulars and we got a whole bunch of new people tonight. Um, so thanks for that. Um, yeah, it's been absolutely awesome and I'm hoping that people who haven't been here before do check out my channel. CFAPS7865 YouTube Vids. Do you know who CFAPS is? Yes, yes, I do. You do? Yes. We had a little falling out, but I'm not going to go into that. Oh, okay. <laughs> when am I going to have Jordan Maxwell again? Um, I don't know. Um, I'm in contact with Jordan. I've got him on Skype. I haven't spoken to him since you know the show two weeks ago. I'm busy and he's busy, but um, I am in contact with Jordan. We will have him back. And with a little bit of luck... Maybe I can afford to take the RV and go all the way out to either do one of two things. Either see him at his last public appearance or maybe, fingers crossed, potentially pick him up and take him there. escort him to his final public appearance. So um, we're working on that one. Um, it's, it's up in the air, uh, but I don't know. Any other, uh, let's see, what else we have here? You like that channel, CFAPS? All right, I'm going to go ahead and copy that. I think it's CF Apps. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm sure. C CFAPS just brings something very wrong to mind. <laughs> Dang it. I'm sorry. I wish the chat would stay still long enough for me to click the copy button. <laughs> <laughs> CF apps. Stay. Copy. Got it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can. We, we've had Zach. Okay. Um, I, 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 if you check out my channel, you'll see uh, why I would rather not speak with the man. And I'll leave it at that. Oh, I just gave him a subscription, so I'll go check out CFAPS. CFAPS. Um, the icon actually looked a little bit familiar. Yeah, he does some very good work, but... We didn't see eye to eye on something. No, I don't think and we'll be having Zach Hubbard. We've had, a, we've had Zach Hubbard on here like three times already. Yep, yep. And, um, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm not going to talk shit, but no, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't anticipate having Zach on here again. I don't either. When and where is Jordan Maxwell's last appearance? Um, it's in Bull, um, uh, oh gosh, I'm, it's just outside of Las Vegas. I've been through the place. It's in, uh, what was it, Reno, Nevada? No, not Reno. No, um, um, it's just outside of Las Vegas. Um, <clears throat> it's at the Aquarius Hotel. It's called MegaCon, I think. I think it's called MegaCon. I know it's at the Aquarius Hotel. Laughlin. Laughlin. It's in Laughlin, Las Vegas, February 14th. Not Laughlin, Nevada. Not Las, Laughlin, Las Vegas. Uh, uh, February, I think, 14th through 22nd. It's a seven-day conference. I know that it's at the Aquarius Hotel, Laughlin, Nevada, February 14th through 22nd of next year. Um, what else? That's pretty much it, I guess. <laughs> but um yeah that was pretty amazing 
Jordan actually, I don't know how serious he was. I'll follow up and see how serious he was, but, um, yeah, I hope <laughs> I may, I may have a bit more to work with by then and may be able to pay my own way. We'll see how it goes. Now I got to know what happened with Zach Hubbard. <laughs> just, uh, we, just, just, just go to my, go to my channel and look for my Skype conversation with Zachary K. Hubbard. And that will give you not all of it, but most of it relative to me. Suffice to say, there was a falling out. And yes. he turned into a dick. Yes. Oh, big time. Yeah, big time. Yeah, that, do that doesn't cover the, the and dick it, eat. And it was related to the fact <clears throat> that Amy was asking legitimate questions about what he was doing with the donation money. That yeah, the money that he said he would use third uh, the first thirty three thousand dollars for a site for truth and after spending just under twenty four hundred dollars after collecting a, about twenty thousand uh the rest of the money just kind of disappeared and i have problems with that <laughs> anyway yeah that's pretty much what happened. So he was taking donations to start a website that never became of anything. And when people were starting to question him about what he was doing with the money that he was already collected, it was like sixteen thousand or twenty thousand well, dollars. He collected sixteen thousand on GoFundMe, and we estimate about another five thousand on uh, PayPal. Yeah. So there was at least twenty grand that he had collected, and uh, people started wondering what's he doing with the money. There was no website. Well, there's there's and, still and no website. No, there no, there was a website. He spent. So two guys said that they would uh, donate their time and effort to create the website. They just wanted money for the server. You know, the cost of the server and the services that were offered there. Yeah. And so he spent a little under twenty four hundred dollars, and after the site was up and running, about I don't know four months, and uh, he came in and basically sabotaged the site. He, first of all, he was virtually never there. He'd pocket pop in and yeah, we don't drop need, we don't we don't need all the details. Bottom line, okay. bottom line, bottom is, line is when we started what, asking, well, Amy started asking. Yeah, I I I uh, many people came and asked me about. You know, they gave him this money specifically for the site. And after he sabotaged it, he started talking about it, just writing it off as a loss and that he was going to use the money for other things. And then started attacking Amy and anybody who questioned what happened with the money. Yep. He, he would In pop in. He, way. he would pop into uh, videos that I'd left a comment on. Nothing to do with him. You know, I mean, I. I just, and then he, he started trolling you. And he started trolling me. Yes, <laughs> yes, he did. He started, you old hag, and don't listen to her. She's a, she's a. Yeah, it turned into a fucking all troll. All kinds of stuff, and yeah, and this, you know, that went on for a couple of months before oh, he finally started leaving me alone. So there it is. That's what happened with Zach. Yep. And we never did find out what happened to the rest of the money. It just sort of dropped off the radar, and that was that. Yeah, he said this. He said the designer sabotaged it. No, that's probably not <laughs> what happened because nope. if he was an honest individual, he wouldn't act that way when we were questioning him about what he was doing with the money and, and what's going on. He wouldn't turn into a huge asshole the way he did just for, for asking what's going on. So no, that's probably not what actually happened. Whatever he said no. happened. No, I was there. No, nope. we were. We were getting along just fine on the site everybody was you know working together and talking about this and yeah okay there were some people who were flat earth there were other people who were not and flat earth came up a fair amount there was there was this area we talked about flat earth and yeah you know the all the problems with that <laughs> and then he came in and said that uh that 
the flat earthers had taken over and he's just the, the site's ruined and and he's not going to put any more money into it because the flat earthers took over and it's like no they didn't they absolutely did not yeah um, like i said some of some were talking about it most of us were talking about the news and running numbers on events and all that right. which is you know change so, subject. yeah i'm done change of subject yes good idea actually i'm done i want to go to bed yeah all right so, love you much love right. thank everybody in the audience for listening in yeah. i appreciate it and love always yeah i definitely appreciate everybody hanging out with us and um be good to each other and pick up your damn trash i'm gonna go ahead and kill the stream we'll see you next week we have global agenda uh we're gonna talk about greta thunberg we're gonna talk about the upcoming seattle potential whatever that may be could be a false flag that the seattle is back in attention everybody is saying that something could happen on november 3rd or uh, yeah november 3rd so we have global agenda on november 1st and i have a piece oh he's gonna like this um amy this is hmm. unless mark is listening uh, spoiler alert um i got a little gem of information to give to mark when we see him next week awesome there's a a transit of uh mercury there's a mercury transit you know what a transit means right across yes the, across, across the sun okay mm -hmm. so mercury transit happens on guess what day november 11th Ver november 11th, 11th well we're, 11th. we're oh okay yes well we'll be seeing him on 11 1 which is only three ones but yeah but he's gonna like that it's 11 11 so there's a mercury transit happening on 11 11 we got global agenda next week and we got Andy logical the week after that so thanks everybody and i'm gonna shut it down it's 12 o'clock you all be good and and do pick up your fucking trash jesus christ pick up your fucking trash stop it just stop it yes all right, you guys. See you next week.